Hi everyone, welcome to today's webinar, Three Easy Ways to Secure Your K-12 School District. I'm Casey Lackey and I'm part of the product marketing team focused on Cisco Umbrella. Thanks so much for joining us today. Let's go ahead and get started. So here's a quick look at our agenda for today. First, we're gonna take a look at some of the challenges that you may be facing. Then we'll walk through the three ways that you can look to secure your school district from cybersecurity threats and inappropriate content. We'll then take a look at how Cisco Umbrella may be able to help. Finally, we'll close out with some time for Q&A. Please keep in mind that we have experts on the line to help answer your questions, so feel free to enter any questions in the Q&A panel as we go. Let's dive in. Today, your students and staff have the freedom to learn in more places than ever, but this wasn't always the case. In the past, everything was contained within your school walls, all of your infrastructure, school laptops, applications, as well as your students and staff. So what's changed? Well, today, there are more off-campus laptops and devices, both school and student-owned, that are accessing the internet from other networks and locations off of campus. Applications and infrastructure are also moving to the cloud. So your students and staff no longer need to connect to the school network to collaborate. They are using cloud apps like G Suite, Office 365, and others. There are also more distributed school locations and district offices. This means there are more locations for you to protect and more potential ways for threats to get in. As a result of these changes, security challenges have also evolved, both on and off your campus. Let's take a look at some of these specific challenges. First, there's malware and other threats. Threats continue to increase in sophistication and frequency, and despite the existing security products that you have deployed today, everything from firewalls to web proxies to email security on your endpoints, you still face too many malware infections and phishing attacks. A distributed campus also leads to more gaps in visibility and coverage. Since you have more locations and devices to protect, there's less visibility into who's accessing what, which means it's harder to protect. You're also facing challenges around securing these cloud collaboration applications, like G Suite. Your students and staff are using more cloud applications. Some are approved, some unapproved, and you need to know which ones are being used as well as protect the data in those apps. There's also difficult to manage security and limited IT budget. So oftentimes security teams are understaffed and struggle with complex systems that don't integrate or share information. These teams need solutions that are easy to deploy, simple to manage, can scale, and also integrate with other tools. And finally, challenges around maintaining compliance, such as CIPA. Ensuring compliance with regulations that protect your students from harmful online content is critical. So you need a solution that enables you to block access to inappropriate content easily and effectively. Now that we've covered some of the challenges that you may be facing, let's get started with a look at the three easy ways that you can secure your school district. We'll talk about each of these in more detail. So first, get up and running quickly. Second, simplify management and gain peace of mind. And third, eliminate ga gaps in visibility and coverage across school sites. So starting with get it up and running quickly, when you're looking for a security solution to secure your environment, it's critical that you're able to get started fast. By gaining coverage in minutes, not months, you can improve productivity while simplifying student and staff collaboration and reducing your on-premise IT costs. This means that you'll be able to quickly secure student welfare on and off your campus. And the faster you're protected means the faster you can secure student records and any other sensitive data. Ultimately, you'll be able to get a quick return on your investment the faster that you're able to effectively deploy a solution. The second item on our list is to simplify management and gain peace of mind. Even if you're able to get up and running quickly, that's not enough. You need intelligence so you can be proactive in your security as opposed to waiting for an attack to hit and remediating after the fact. Although threats continue to increase in sophistication, attackers often reuse the same internet infrastructure, 
like web servers, IP addresses, and domains in multiple attacks, leaving behind what we call cyber fingerprints. So what if you could use those fingerprints to identify emerging attacks as they're staged and block them before they launch? Simplifying management not only means being proactive, but it also means integrating with other security solutions that you have today so that you can further amplify protection. You probably have other security products in your environment today. And by integrating your security tools, you can gain peace of mind that your intelligence is working together to protect against threats so that you don't have to. So we've talked about getting up and running quickly and simplifying management so that you can gain peace of mind. The last item on our checklist is to eliminate gaps in visibility and coverage. As we know, security needs have evolved along with the freedom to learn from many different locations and devices. By gaining visibility into all internet activity, whether it's on or off your campus, you can better protect against threats before they've actually reached your network. You can also ensure that roaming students and staff are secured anywhere that they access the internet. And with better visibility, you can deliver reliable off-campus coverage across any internet-connected school and staff device, such as laptops or Chromebook devices. Now that we've reviewed the three ways to secure your school district, let's take a look at how Cisco Umbrella can help. Umbrella is a secure internet gateway that provides the first line of defense against threats on the internet anywhere your users go. By analyzing and learning from internet activity patterns, Umbrella automatically uncovers attacker infrastructure that's staged for current and emerging threats, and it proactively blocks malicious requests before they reach your network or your endpoints. With Umbrella, you can stop phishing and malware infections earlier, identify already infected devices faster, and prevent data exfiltration. Because Umbrella is built into the foundation of the internet and delivered from the cloud, it provides complete visibility into internet activity across locations and users. Plus, it's one of the simplest security products to deploy and manage. So let's look now at where Umbrella fits within your environment. If you think about where you enforce security today, you probably have a range of products that are already deployed. And because there are many ways that malware can get in, it's important that you have multiple layers of security. Umbrella provides the first line of defense so that you can block malware before it hits school sites or devices. You can contain malware if it's already hit your network. You can provide even faster internet access, and you can provision globally in just minutes. So how does Umbrella actually work? With Umbrella, it all begins with DNS. We use DNS as the main mechanism to get traffic to our cloud platform for inspection. Now, everyone has probably heard of DNS, but let's level set on what it is and why it's so important with Umbrella. DNS is the domain name system, and it's used to map domain names like cisco.com to an IP address. Think about when you want to call your friend or a colleague you'll look up their name in your contact list instead of trying to remember everyone's phone number. DNS was developed for a very similar reason, so you wouldn't need to remember the IP address for every website that you want to visit. DNS is the first step in nearly all internet connections, and it's used by all devices. So with Umbrella, we're tying into something that you're already doing today. Anytime you click on a link or type a URL for an external site, the request goes to a recursive DNS service like Umbrella to look up the IP address. So Umbrella will actually resolve the DNS request plus add security at the same time, all without adding any latency. In fact, as I mentioned before, many of our customers report better internet performance after switching to Umbrella. Umbrella provides security enforcement without any delay. We just reviewed how Umbrella uses DNS to enforce security, but how does this actually work? So when Umbrella receives a DNS request, it first identifies which customer the request came from and which policy to apply. Next, Umbrella determines if the request is safe or whitelisted, malicious or blacklisted, 
or risky. For safe requests, we route the connection as usual. If it's a malicious request, we route the connection to a block page so the connection is never actually made. And then finally, for any risky request, we route the connection to our cloud-based proxy for deeper inspection. And Umbrella not only protects against initial infection, it also prevents command and control callbacks. So even if devices become infected in other ways, Umbrella blocks the communication to an attacker's server. This stops any data exfiltration or the download of ransomware encryption keys. Command and control callbacks are blocked using the same DNS enforcement process that I described a minute ago. And in the event that the malicious payload is designed to bypass DNS and use a direct IP connection, Umbrella goes beyond DNS to provide malicious IP blocking and enforcement. You may be wondering what makes Umbrella's threat intelligence so powerful and how we're able to proactively identify threats. One key factor is that our view of the internet is like no other security provider. So the Umbrella Global Network includes 30 data centers around the world that resolve over 175 billion DNS requests for more than 90 million users across over 160 countries every day. We also peer with over 800 of the top internet service providers and content delivery networks to exchange BGP routes and ensure we're routing requests efficiently and not adding any latency over regional DNS providers. Not only do we have this massive amount of data, but perhaps more importantly, it's very diverse. It's not just from a single geography or a single protocol. This diversity really enables us to offer unprecedented insight into staged and launched attacks. So we're able to learn where the threats are coming from, who's launching them, where they're going to, how broad the attack may be, and more. In addition to the DNS data that I just described, there are a few more factors that make up our threat intelligence. So starting with a look at our data, beyond the DNS data, this also includes a Cisco Talos feed of malicious domains and IPs based on researchers' analysis of millions of malware samples and terabytes of data collected from Cisco deployments worldwide. The second key factor is our security researchers. They look at this data and use advanced techniques like data mining and 3D visualization to identify patterns. They're constantly finding new ways to like uncover fingerprints that attackers may leave behind, and then they're building statistical and machine learning models to automatically score and classify this data. So lastly, the models that I just mentioned. These models continuously run against our data so we can uncover malicious domains, IPs and URLs before they're even used in attack. Our security researchers are always innovating and creating new models to provide better threat detection and classification. So don't just take it from me. Here's a quote from one of our recent Tech Validate survey respondents highlighting that after deploying Umbrella, their institution saw a 75% reduction in mail or tickets. So Umbrella is a very, very effective first line of defense against these threats, and this is pretty common feedback that we hear from our customers. I mentioned earlier that Umbrella offers protection for all devices, and you can easily point your external DNS request to the Umbrella Global Network to get started right away. I'll talk more about this in a few slides, but I wanted to highlight the Cisco Umbrella Chromebook client which provides DNS layer protection on and off the network for your Chromebook users. Specifically, the Chromebook client helps to provide protection from phishing, um, and this is done by automatically uh, leveraging the intelligence from Umbrella's global network data and predictive intelligence to discover internet infrastructure that's used to host phishing sites before your employees or students ever receive the phishing email. We also offer content category filtering so that you can gain visibility and control of content on and off campus so that you can help to ensure compliance with SIPA using over 80 content categories as well as your own allow and block list. 
And then finally, with the Umbrella Chromebook client, you also gain per user visibility and policy. So you can enforce policy-based protection, whether users are on or off campus. And if a Chromebook user becomes infected, you can easily pinpoint activity to a specific user in order to expedite that remediation. With the Umbrella Chromebook client, you can easily provide visibility and policy control for users that have Chromebook devices. You can also create direct policies for all your Chromebook users or a subset. And coming soon, we have the Umbrella Chromebook client G Suite integration, which will allow policies to be set by organization unit or OU in addition to individual users. And here's a Tech Validate survey respondent who was able to better track student internet activity using our Chromebook client and really pinpoint um, activity based on those users. So I mentioned a bit about our content filtering capabilities. We have over 80 content categories and you can easily control and report on which sites can be accessed by your students and staff. You can also create custom lists for which categories to block and allow, enabling SIPA compliance and ensuring inappropriate content can't be accessed. I'm now gonna walk through a few more reporting views as an example. Here the identity report is shown and that enables you to identify and review malicious internet activity per device or network as it happens in real time across your organization or school district. This helps to quickly spot and remediate potential victims. Specifically, you can pivot into any identity, whether it's a network, a computer, or a user. You can also view top security destinations per identity, which can show what else this user might be infected with. And you can see top overall destinations, which gives insight into what else this user is doing. You can also see the top security categories, which I'll dive into more in the next slide here. So with the top categories report shown here, you can easily see the most active categories by the number of requests, as well as detail into whether or not that request was blocked or allowed. The last reporting view I want to share is the app discovery report, which enables you to gain visibility into the cloud apps that are being used in your environment. And then block any applications that may be unsafe, either by application name or by application category. This report also provides application risk insight so that you can make informed decisions about which applications that you want to allow or block, depending on the level of risk. So using Umbrella's powerful reporting capabilities, this customer was able to identify malicious traffic that they didn't even know existed until they had that additional visibility into all internet activity. I mentioned earlier Umbrella's ease of deployment. It really is the easiest way to protect your users because it's delivered from the cloud. There's no hardware to install or software to manually update. And because we use the domain name system, or DNS, as the primary mechanism to get traffic to our platform, forwarding your traffic to us is as simple as changing a single setting in your network devices. So for on-campus coverage, you can protect all devices, even those that you don't own, by pointing your external DNS request to the IP address for our global network. Umbrella is also integrated with a number of Cisco routers, um, and if you use any of these Cisco routers, you can simply upgrade to the latest network device software and configure the connection through an Umbrella API. For off-campus laptop coverage, if you use Cisco AnyConnect, you can simply enable the Umbrella roaming security module for protection when the VPN is off. And if you're not a Cisco AnyConnect user, we also offer a lightweight standalone agent that works with any VPN and has been proven in over a million deployments. And finally, we talked earlier about the Umbrella Chromebook client, which provides that protection for your Chromebook users both on and off campus.
This concludes the presentation portion of today's session. Thank you so much for your time today. If you're ready to see Umbrella in action, you can sign up for a free 14-day trial at signup.umbrella.com, and it takes just a minute to get started. Today, I shared a few quotes from our customers highlighting the outcomes they were able to achieve with Umbrella, and I'm also thrilled to share that we've been named in the March 2019 Gartner Peer Insights Voice of the Customer Report for Secure Web Gateways. We received the highest overall rating in the SWG market and are very excited and honored to get this recognition from our customers. Thank you again for joining us today. I'd now like to hand it over to my colleague, Nitin, to address some of the Q&A live. Nitin, I'll hand it over to you. Cool. Thanks, Casey. Hi, everyone. Um, so uh, there's a question that came up about um, uh, licensing, and uh, I think the the, uh, the gentleman asked specifically about um, licensing with the the difference between Umbrella and Cisco Meraki. I just wanted to expand and, and talk a little bit more about um, some of the licensing and packages that Umbrella offers. So uh, traditionally, we do offer we have a number of different packages, um, and we typically license by the total number of users. Uh, you know that can vary between either a one to or three year subscription. Uh, but specifically for our EDU customers in the education space, um, we do have a specific uh, education package. And I actually included that in the Q&A um, uh, answer there. So you guys can sort of uh, access that and, and take a look at the information on that package. Uh, the way that's licensed is we, we basically charge by a number of faculty and staff users, and there's no charge for students. Um, so definitely if you're interested in, in Umbrella or anything that Casey talked about, you know, definitely take a look at that. Um, offline, there are also some questions about uh, connect or availability of our service. Uh, so one thing to note is that since 2006, Umbrella has actually had 100% business uptime. Um, so you could, if you want to see our, our status live, you can actually go to um, status.umbrella.com, and that will actually give you all of our sort of operational, you know, status and availability. Um, you know, which data centers are are um, currently up, or if there's any that are down, uh, and then. You know, in the case of a kind of a global data center outage or scheduled maintenance, we actually have a technology that we use called AnyCast, um, which actually reroutes your DNS request to the next closest data center. Um, so that's why we, you know, we we have this great uh, sort of uptime and availability is because we're we're leveraging that AnyCast technology. And lastly, you know, Casey talked a little bit about you know some of the ways you can deploy Umbrella. Um, obviously, you know, Chromebook is one of them that's, you know, been adopted in a lot of our sort of customer space and is especially within the, the uh, K through 12. Um, so as far as how that's deployed, the, we actually have a, a Chromebook uh, client uh, that can be deployed as an extension and an application on, on any Chromebook that you, uh, you manage today. And that's actually available on the Chrome uh, web store today. So it's very easy to pull down. Uh, and very easy to deploy as well, uh, especially if you, you sort of sign on for uh, for EDU packages. Um, cool. So I think that was uh, that was it for questions. Um, and then we'll answer anything else offline. Great. Thanks so much, Nitin. And thanks again, everyone, for joining. Have a great day.